Hello again everyone, John V here again from Phone Arena. If you haven't checked it out already, our HP Touchpad Review is available right now on our website, so if you want to learn more about it, you can check it out over there. But right now, I'm just going to go over the WebOS 3.0 experience. Just going to, we're just going to expand upon uh, what it has to offer and give you some of our thoughts about it as a tablet operating system and ultimately how it compares against the competition out there. First, let's just talk about the design aesthetics of WebOS 3.0 versus for other versions of uh, the platform that we've seen. In all honesty, it's pretty much the same that we find on a WebOS smartphone, which is kind of sad in a way, but when you think about it, it doesn't really deviate from what we see with the iPad 2 and the iPhone just because it's quite similar in taste. What we do find new is the status bar, which is located on the top here. It gives you access to things like the, uh, the time, the battery, and also the connection options. And when you click on that, you give some additional functionality. At the same time, the notifications will pop up there which is great just because it's not obtrusive it doesn't pop up in any way you just click on the notification and you can choose to accept it or ignore it which is definitely nice and handy but everything else is pretty much intact you got the launcher here for some uh, icons and of course you have also the app panel which laid in traditional form nothing really different about it it's still lacking the uh, personalization elements that you see it's prevalent with uh, Android Honeycomb um, something that we would like to see down the road with WebOS 3.0 Naturally, the biggest frustration that we have with WebOS 3.0 is just the erratic performance with it. Uh, specifically, sometimes certain programs just take a long time for it to load up, and we'll quickly demo that here for you, just to give you a good indication of what it looks like. When it works, it runs really good and it looks fluid and smooth, especially when you're trying to navigate between the different cards. It's nice, but other times it's just uh, very erratic with its operation, and you're just sometimes left hanging there waiting for it to, something to happen. We did experience some uh, some random uh, restarts here and just like right now it just takes a little bit of a time for things to load up and that's obviously one of the biggest gripes that we have about it. So now we'll just talk about some of the core applications with WebOS 3.0 and the most important one here is going to be probably the email application and we have to hand it to HP. They really thought about this one with its layout. We definitely like the three panel view at first but you have the ability to customize it to either a two panel or a single panel just to get better visibility with your emails. However, though, it's kind of missing out certain certain functionalities, such as the ability to have threaded conversations for better organization. On top of that, if you're going to have to delete multiple emails, you've got to swipe every single one, delete them manually. There's no way to simultaneously uh, select multiple emails at once. Without a doubt, one of the strong points about WebOS 3.0 versus other platforms is the visual uh, representation of multitasking that it has to offer. Just because uh, unlike some other platforms which give you basically a task manager or just a list to close down your applications, you get these cards view as so you can see actually what programs are running and can quickly move uh, through any of them. Stacks feature is nice just because you'll be able to better organize uh, specific uh, applications with one another. And of course, just to close them out, you get also a dynamic approach to it. You just quickly swipe like that to close them out and definitely works and it's something very fitting for a tablet operating system. We've already mentioned a review of the HP touchpad, the decent messaging experience you get when it actually works, but we do find another strange anomaly that can be kind of frustrating and we'll quickly demo that here for you. As you saw what we typed here, we typed in test123 and we intentionally misspelled 1 and 2 um, and automatically correct them, which is nice. But now it's underlining it, it's indicating to us that it's misspelled. Um, and when you click on that, it gives you a suggestion and it's not the correct suggestion. It actually gives you a wrong one. So we really can't say why it does that. HP decided to go with a cookie cutter approach to the layout of the calendar app with WebOS 3.0 and honestly it doesn't deviate that much from the WebOS smartphone experience. We do like the fact that it is color coded but unfortunately though there's some extra, a lot of extra uh, unused real estate whether you're looking at from a monthly or weekly or even daily calendar view we would just like to see a little bit more of the uh, extra dead space use for better organization. There are actually some things that plague the web browsing experience on the HP touchpad. Uh, first of all, it just takes a long time for it to load up complex web pages, which can be attributed to the flash content in the background versus some other tablets. Uh, secondly, though, uh, there's just some performance issues in regards to just uh, the overall fluidity of just navigation. Sometimes it's not as responsive as we like, and it looks pretty choppy with things like kinetic scrolling and pinch zooming. But ultimately, it does work and function fine, and you do get that desktop-like experience. 
Browsing through photos and videos in the gallery app is indeed a challenging experience on the HP touchpad just because it's marred by some performance issues you could tell it's just kind of choppy and just navigating through the albums and times can be unresponsive. When you're actually looking at specific photos you have the normal set of features such as swiping through them so you can view different ones, pinch gestures to zoom in and zoom out. Unfortunately though it lacks any deep uh, sharing or even editing functions. Indeed, it's kind of strange to find that most tablet operating systems don't have any glitzy looking music player interfaces and the same could be said about the one here WebOS 3.0. It's pretty generic and straightforward. You have your on-screen controls and your playlists and whatnot. But besides that, nothing really eye-catching about it. We'd like to see a little bit more just to give it a slight edge over the competition. But it functions as it should. Definitely unnerving to say the least, there's actually a YouTube icon in the app panel, but when you click on it, it doesn't launch an application, but instead it just points you to the uh, main YouTube website and doesn't offer any different look to it. We'd like to see a standalone application just because uh, WebOS for smartphones utilizes a dedicated one and something that's kind of important. Furthermore, we're actually glad to see that there is a Maps application with WebOS 3.0 which is powered by Bing Maps instead of Google Maps that's found on WebOS for smartphones. It's basic with its features. You have things like road view, satellite view, and this nifty bird's eye view. You also get driving directions, transit, and even walking directions. It's pretty basic at its core and doesn't quite encompass the depth of features found with the competition such as Google Maps navigation with Honeycomb. Surprisingly, we're enamored by the wealth of third-party applications available to WebOS 3.0 from the onset and developers have done a wonderful job in their thought-out layout. As you can tell here with the Groupon, it utilizes that three-panel interface, very fitting. Same thing applies to the others here like uh, Spaz HD, a Twitter client for WebOS 3.0. You have the weather bug application for your weather. And you have USA Today, which has this nice uh, uh, tiered uh, format with its uh, presentation, definitely nice. And finally, Comics HD. And all in all, we're very impressed with uh, what's offered so far. So here's the lowdown with the WebOS 3.0 experience. It actually needs some growing up to do, just because it's not yet quite as polished as we'd like. Specifically, it's just marred by a variety of different glitches, bugs, whatever you want to call it, uh, performance issues when you're just uh, opening up applications, the long load times, the jerkiness sometimes with kinetic scrolling. It can be rather frustrating, and of course, that's something that future software updates will definitely improve upon. But as far as the tablet OS experience is concerned, it's definitely fitting, even though it doesn't dramatically differentiate itself from the smartphone experience. It's just nice to see that some of the core apps are optimized to take advantage of the tablet space and it still keeps intact all the uh, great notifications aspect and the multitasking elements that's found with WebOS in general. Definitely works there. We like to see also a focus on personalization because when you look at Honeycomb uh, it definitely excels in that area and something we like to see also offered with uh, WebOS. So if you'd like to learn more about the WebOS 3.0 experience you can check out our website. Fallenarena.com and thanks for watching guys.